Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Welcome to another video by me, Flojo. So today we're going to be looking at how to set a variable on Power Automate Desktop. So the action is set variable. Now, the first thing that we should discuss is that it's not strongly typed. So if you are used to, um, let's say, Microsoft Power Automate, and you've uh, selected a variable, and then you've selected a type of variable, such as a string, or a boolean value, well, you're not going to do that on Power Automate Desktop. You're simply going to select set variable, and then you're going to input your variable in. So it could be a numerical value, it could be a string, it could be a true false statement. You're not actually going to tell it what you're actually going to be using because it's going to work it out itself. It's not strongly typed. So there is no need to state that it is a string if you're even using a string. Secondly, this action actually creates as well as overwrites existing variables. So when you select set variable, if you've already got a variable set, you can just enter the name again and overwrite it. Or if you're creating it for the first time, you can enter a name as well as then pass in a value. So what does this look like then? When you select set variable for the first time, you're going to see this little screen pop up. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to set the variable name. And as you can see where it says new var, if you clicked on there, you'll be able to enter a new name. And as soon as you click off of that, it's going to set that name for you. And then in the big box that says two, this is where you're going to pass your variable content, or you're going to do any calculations or anything like that, that you're going to pass. And then you'll hit save. Now let's say we wanted to create a variable that was empty. We just want to create a variable at the top that had, let's say, an empty string. Well, you'd think that if you click save now, with how everything is, just new var and an empty spot, and press save, um, you would have an empty string variable. But because it's not strongly typed, it doesn't know what you're actually doing. So you would then go down the approach of using um, uh, two speech marks to actually state that you're using this string and press save. However, because there is nothing within the speech marks, it's going to throw an error. It's going to effectively say your string is the string. So how do you get around this then? Well, to get around this particular error, the two cannot be empty, you need to use this statement. Now this statement is effectively allowing you to tell Power to Make Desktop that you want to pass an empty string. This will basically be um, the percent sign, then two quotation marks, as well as another percent sign. Then if you hit save, that will solve the issue of having empty strings within a um, new variable. Okay, so let's take a look at what it actually looks like if you just pass in two quotation marks. So if you choose to pass in two quotation marks, what's going to happen is that it's going to think that that is the string, that's part of the string. Now, if you look here, you've got single quotation marks around your double quotation marks here. Now, your apostrophes are effectively going to be telling it that these speech marks are part of a string. Now, what's going to be interesting then is that you're going to have a string which is two quotation marks rather than an empty string. So that's something to be cautious of when working with something like this um, that doesn't have strongly typed variables. You have to use the, uh, the, the, the function given to us, which is the percentage sign as well as the double quotations and another percentage sign to indicate that you want to use an empty string. 
Okay, so let's actually take a look at this on PowerMate Desktop to see what it's like as an example. Okay, so we're on Power Automate Desktop and we want to select an action. So if you haven't seen this before, on the left hand side we have our actions and we have variables. Then we have all of the different type of variable actions we can choose. Now we want set variable, we can drag and drop that or we can simply double click on it. And we get presented with the pop-up screen that we was looking at previously. Now if I click on here to change the new var to the name demo, you can see that I have my uh, percent signs around this again because we are referencing this. Um, so if we want to put demo in here, it's going to signify that this is going to be the name and it's going to change it for you. Now, let's say we want to set demo as a false value. We want to set it as a Boolean value of false. I press save. You can see demo is now set to false. What happens then if I want to set it to true? I can set another one and then I can use this little um, curly brackets and X, press that and select demo so I don't have to type it again. I can reference the variable that we had previously set and I want to then set it to true. So what's happened is I've created a uh, demo variable here and I've set it to false. Then I've referenced the demo variable here and I've set it to true. Now, what happens if we want to simply create a string variable then? I can then say flowjo and press save. And as you can see, I've now got a string variable of flowjo. But as previously mentioned, if we put speech marks in there, they are going to be part of the string. So if I open up this again and I remove those, and then just press save. I now have demo as a string of Flojo without the speech marks because it's not going to be part of the string because I'm not trying to pass speech mark Flojo speech mark. Okay, so let's actually press run then. So what's going to happen then is it's going to go through the stages of setting Flojo to demo. And on the right hand side here, where you can see the input and output variables, you can also see the flow variables. Now the flow variables are the ones that we're working with, with the set here. And you can see the actual result. So you can see demo is now set to flow Joe. And if you double click on that, you can also see the um, type. It's a text value and it has the text of flow Joe. So that is how you use set variable action on Power Automate Desktop. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.